G'day everyone and welcome to my Destrex video. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be taking a look at my friend's eco farm, which is down on the border of Cavite province and Batungas province, just outside of Tagai Tai. And Tagai Tai is famous for Ta'al Volcano, uh, which you can see in the background here. Stay tuned for more. Today's going to be a great day. Okay, so here we are down at my friend's eco farm just outside of Tagai Tai. It's just after sunrise, so we're gonna fire the drone up and try and get a few overhead shots, catch some of the sunrise. And, uh, and today we're gonna to be taking a look around his eco farm. And looking at sustainable living. Um, and how this can be done in the Philippines. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, um, this is a cooperative farm. If you're into sustainable farming and maybe you can't afford to buy or lease um, some property to do your own farm, this is a cooperative farm, um, which means that basically you get the land or a portion of the land, you plant your own crops, you look after your own crops, you harvest your own crops, and, um, and you pay a very, very small fee uh, to my friend here in order to do that. So anyone can do this. If you're all about having a sustainable lifestyle, having a minimal impact on the environment, um, eating healthy, so you've got your own products that are uh, organic, you can take part of this if you like. So this is something that anybody can do. It's a matter of how important a sustainable lifestyle is for you and your family. Let's take a look around now and you'll be able to get a good idea of what's being done down here at my friend's uh, farm. So first of all, when you're doing farming, one of the, uh, the factors that you need to take into consideration is bugs actually attacking your vegetables and your fruit. We've got a little bit of a method here in which we can help to prevent this. And you'll see here that we've basically got a bottle full of water, okay? But it's been sprayed with a particular organic substance which attracts the bugs, namely the flies. If you look a bit closer at the bottle here, you'll see that all the flies and bugs are all stuck to that. So that bottle gets sprayed with this particular substance. It's a sticky substance and it actually attracts uh, the flies and the bugs and they get stuck to it. So that's one little way that you can stop these uh, pests from uh, causing any havoc on your crops. Okay, so I mentioned that this is a cooperative farm. So here's another portion of, of the farm here. It's been recently tilled. Um, so the soil's basically getting ready for preparation. This is actually where the cooperative farm will be. So you can see at the moment there's nothing here. Eventually this will be the area in which people can grow their own vegetables um, and their own produce and take advantage of Johan's generosity um, in allowing him to utilise some of his property um, in order to uh, set up your own little farm. So as I mentioned earlier, you don't need to buy your own farm, okay? You can lease a portion of this farm for yourself and grow your own produce here. Down here, we've got um, some eggplants. Many of you like spicy food, um, but chilies, I absolutely love chilies. Uh, so we'll see here, uh, we've got a, a, a couple of little chili bushes. Um, and lettuce and things being grown here. here we've got some, um, some beds, as you can see, that have been prepared here for growing uh, vegetables. Uh, deep bed planting and the dimensions of this are actually made so as you can see it's um, basically a pit an above ground pit and the whole idea of this is so that when you're actually weeding or pulling out your vegetables that you're not on your hands and knees at ground level trying to pull things out. Like see here the, the width of this particular bed it's 
twice your arm's length, which means that on either side of this bed, you can basically reach the center of it. So there has been a bit of thought put into this. Um, this particular one's getting ready for preparation for planting, but it's also done in a way so that when you water your vegetables, the water doesn't seep through the walls of this bed. The water goes deep, which is actually better for growing the vegetables as well. And then of course, the soil that goes into this um, will be composted, um, it'll be fertilized, um, and it will also be a combination of the indigenous soil, some of which you can see behind me here, okay? But it'll be highly fer fertilized and composted. Uh, we'll check out some composting a little bit later as well. Inside here we have, uh, these are carrots, as you can see there. And then here we've got some uh, pak choy, which the Chinese love using in their cooking. And of course, no farm in the Philippines would be complete without some banana trees, which we can see we've got uh, a little bit of a crop of banana trees just here as well. And there's some, uh, there's some bananas just there. Where we are now in Tagai Tai is uh, very famous for pineapples. Uh, there's a lot of pineapple plantations and farms around here. And uh, we can see here we've got some, uh, some pineapples planted here as well. And then right here, uh, we've got a nice juicy pumpkin. And here we've got our uh, machine that's used for tilling the soil, Filipino style. And as you can see here, it breaks up the soil nicely, uh, preparing it for a plantation. So we can see up here the, uh, the wind turbine, so that's supplying power as well. which is another alternative source of power if you're trying to be self-sufficient. So here we've got the um, inverter and the battery packs for the uh, wind turbine system um, that we saw on the roof outside. So this gives you an idea of what it looks like and how it powers the, uh, the house. And then here's the uh, traditional Morelco um, power as well. So it gives you an idea of what it looks like from the inside. We're going to have some uh, fresh buco juice in a moment. As we can see here, we've got the, uh, the bucos themselves. So for those that don't know, um, that's uh, just a young coconut. And uh, the juice from uh, the buco coconut is absolutely sensational and uh, actually has a lot of health benefits. Uh, there's a lot of people these days getting into drinking the buco juice. So there it is right there, harvested straight off the coconut plant or the coconut tree, right there. So here I am now with my fresh buco juice. Absolutely beautiful. Straight out of the coconut as nature intended. Oh. Absolutely beautiful. And buco juice is uh, full of natural electrolytes and um, is very, very good for you. Very good for a hangover actually as well. This is like a natural Gatorade. Doesn't get much better than that. <sighs> and then when you're uh, finished with these coconut shells, uh, one of the things that they do here is actually grind these empty shells um, into like chips and they actually make fabric out of it. Um, so different types of fabric can be made. They use it for clothing. They use it for matting, uh, which can be used in an agricultural sense. So once again, nothing goes to waste, which is uh, about sustainable farming and taking care of our environment. We can see here, we've got the, uh, the coconut split it in half and we've got the flesh inside. 
However, before disposing of the coconut uh, and having the, the shell of it shredded, there's still the flesh on the inside of the coconut. You scoop out with a spoon and you eat it. And this is probably the best part of the coconut, is scooping the flesh out and eating it. Very nutritious and very good for you. Before we saw the deep bed that's being used for planting the vegetables and I mentioned about the compost and we'll see here that we've got some compost and of course one of the main ingredients when it comes to composts is chicken poo so and in here we've got our chickens so we'll hop inside and take a look at these chickens yeah this is the, this is the Australorp, the Australian ones they get they're usually uh, black or white, so we got a bit of a gene, gene mix, you know. So these are pure Australians, and the eggs are really nice. These lay about 10 eggs per day. That lasts for about two years. It's a lot of eggs. Yeah. Before we took a look at the chickens, and of course the chickens lay eggs, and here we've got an egg incubator. So we'll take a look inside. And here we are looking inside the egg incubator. For those that haven't seen an egg incubator, that's what it looks like on the inside. And then around in this little section here is the orchard. So there's a number of different uh, fruit trees planted around here. Uh, some pretty good methods of actually growing these, which we'll talk about now. One of the things they do is actually stake the branches so what we mean by that is that they put a stake in the ground, as you can see here. It means that the tree grows outward rather than upward. And that means that when it comes to taking the fruit from the trees, it's a lot easier. And the other benefit of doing it is because the tree is growing outwards rather than upward, each branch actually gets more sunlight. So that's actually better uh, for the growth of the tree. So simple little methods like this can really make a difference. There's a, uh, another angle of the, um, the turbine on the roof, the wind turbine on the roof over there. And once again, this is an alternate source for providing electricity for your house. Saves you money and it's better for the environment while you're at it. Here we've got the uh, the fish pond. You can't quite see the fish, um, but the fish in here are uh, a tilapia, which is a, a local fish, uh, which I think is somewhat like a carp, um, as we have in Australia. And then over here we've got uh, the water tanks. Now there's actually a circulation system going on in here where the water um, is separated, and it's actually uh, I think it's called aquaponics, where the basically the fish poo. Um, with the water is actually very good quality for watering the vegetables so the nutrients and so forth that are, it's like a form of manure that are in that water are actually good for watering all the plants and all the vegetables so you'll see here the water tanks that's part of the circulation process from this pond so that the water um, is gravity fed and is used to water the vegetables out here We've actually got bamboo, um, which can be eaten, all right? The Chinese are known for eating bamboo shoots, particularly the shoots. Uh, so we've also got some bamboo here, which can be eaten. Okay, so there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and checking out something a little bit different um, to see what people are doing down here to make a difference uh, with sustainable farming, making sure they've got good quality produce, making sure they're having minimal impact on the environment and making sure they're developing a sustainable lifestyle. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, just click below, you'll see subscribe. And we're gonna check out some amazing places. This is just the beginning of 2019. We've got so much coming up this year. It's gonna be absolutely epic. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the action.